there's a very interesting and intense set of verses that are kind of tucked in between the stories of Christ there in John chapter 12. We have to look at the context of what has happened. And in chapter 11, of course, Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. And uh, that was quite a miraculous event. And there was still a lot of people gathered around the tomb of Lazarus when that happened. So there was a lot of people talking about it in and around the Jewish community. And of course, Bethany, where this takes place, is not that far from Jerusalem. So it's getting around town, shall we say. And we are about six days before Passover, which would put it basically on that Saturday before the triumphal entry happens on what we now celebrate as Palm Sunday, the Sunday before the first day of the week when Jesus was raised from the dead at his resurrection. So that's the setting. And we find the Jews are starting to gather into Jerusalem for the Passover. And that's where we pick up in verse 9. The great multitude, therefore, of the Jews learned that he, Jesus, was there. And they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might also see Lazarus, whom Jesus raised from the dead. But the chief priests took counsel that they might put Lazarus to death also, because on account of him, many of the Jews were going away and were believing in Jesus. There was a revival happening. There was a, shall we say, an evangelistic movement happening as a result of Lazarus raising from the dead. When Jesus raised him from the dead, that convinced several, many Jews that the Jewish religion was basically a bunch of rituals and traditions and they were basically saying well we're gonna believe in this Jesus because he fits the mold he's doing what the prophets had predicted and prophesied that he would do and the chief priests get upset about that now there's a reason they get upset about it because the Passover is the big money maker Okay, and that's always what the problem is in religious circles. When they get upset, it's because the money isn't coming in like they want it to. And this happens denominationally and, of course, in the sectarianism of the Christian faith almost far too regularly. The Jewish faith, or the Jewish religion, shall we say, is no different. People were not coming to the temple. They had seen what they needed to see. They were understanding spiritually who Jesus was, and they were walking away. And the Jews didn't like this, so they wanted to put Jesus to death. And we read, you know, in the previous chapter that they were already conspiring to do this, and now they say, well, we'll put Lazarus to death, too, at the same time. That way, he can't be raised from the dead again. They're going to make sure Jesus is quenched. They're going to make sure he's dead and anything around him that he did miraculously is destroyed. That's no different than the work of the enemy, Satan, does today. He is wanting to quench anything that looks Christian in the genuine sense of the word. And that's why there is such a small group of people out there right now in the Christian community of faith that really understand what's happening in the world. And you say, well, that kind of makes it sound like they're elitist. No, they're in the Word of God, and they're studying, and they're realizing what the Word is telling them about the world they live in. And they realize the world is out to destroy the Christian faith. And that's what's happening. And I'm going to tell you something. We are not going to get removed from that. We are going to go through that because it will be good for us. Jesus even says later on in John chapter 17 that he's going to go through it with us. He's not here to take us out of our trials and tribulations, but that he will be there with us and he will see us through. And we need to understand that very clearly because the enemy is out to destroy anything that's attached to genuine 
Christianity and of course anything that proves Jesus is the living Son of God.